Palermo. Here. Festerson. Here. Gray. Here. Harding. Here. Melton. Here. Mr. President. Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just a couple words about uh, my hope. My hope is that after we hear the mayor's budget proposal for next year, that on August 13th and between now and then, and as we consider the budget, we'll hear from all of you, uh, both in the room and at home, and that it'll be a very participatory, engaged process here. There's nothing more um, enjoyable for us than to hear from you about what your priorities are for the budget, and it helps guide us as we deliberate the proposals that, that we'll hear about yeah. today. So, Mayor, welcome. Let's you ready? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Do you have to start? Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll okay. Sorry. An affidavit of publication is on file for the pre-council and city council meeting, and a current copy of the Open Meeting Act is posted in a white binder on the east wall of the legislative chambers. Give your Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this meeting of the Omaha City Council. We thank you for joining us here today. As a courtesy to those in attendance, we ask that you please turn off or silence your cell phones. Madam Clerk. Item 6, Mayor Jean Stothard's budget message and presentation of the recommended 2020 budget. Thank you. Is this on? Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Council President, President Jerem and city council members, guests, and citizens of Omaha. I am pleased today to present to you the 2020 City of Omaha budget and the six-year capital improvement program. Many people work very, very hard to make sure our budget is accurate and reliable. To these city employees, thank you for your work and your commitment to Omaha. I also thank the city council for your input and your ideas on developing our city's priorities. Our budget is a reflection of the people the programs and investments that will sustain our community and leverage opportunities before us. The highlights of our recommendations to you today are the increase in the total general fund spending for city departments for 2020 budget is 2.2%. Cost savings and efficiencies have made this low growth rate possible while still increasing funding for our priorities and most important services, which are police fire, and street repair. The 2020 property tax rate will remain unchanged in 2020. This is the seventh consecutive budget that our property tax rate was either lowered or left unchanged, and I am very proud of this record. On the revenue side, we anticipate that our sales tax revenue to increase slightly more than 2% in 2020. After five years of nearly flat property tax valuations, valuations did increase in 2019 and will increase in 2020 also. The budget includes our initial funding for the exciting riverfront revitalization project now under construction. This transformative project is funded with $250 million of private money and the city's contribution is $50 million in lease purchase bonds over the next three years. The 2020 budget includes $5.2 million, which pays the first year of this debt service on those bonds and our annual contribution for park maintenance and operations. We will get a great return on this investment. Our cash reserve fund is also very strong and we have added more funds in 2020. The Omaha economy is very strong. The unemployment rate updated just Friday by the Nebraska Department of Labor is 3.3%, while the national average is 3.7%. The rate of development growth is one of the highest we've had in our history. Since 2013, we have issued more than 283,000 building permits at a value of nearly $5 billion. These favorable economic conditions and our ongoing sound financial management and spending controls allow us to accomplish something very unique. For seven budgets in a row, 
we have held the line on the property tax rate. In fact, we have lowered the rate, rate twice and just look at what we have achieved. We have invested in public safety personnel and upgraded equipment. We have added nearly 100 new police officers. We will have replaced nine medic units, 13 fire trucks, and seven battalion chief vehicles. We have prioritized the road resurfacing budget every year since 2013 for a total of $64 million. We have resurfaced 738 lane miles of road. That's the distance between Omaha and Waco, Texas. We have upgraded and built new facilities. A new Southwest Police Precinct headquarters opened in 2016, and our new West Precinct will open September of this year. We will break ground on a new fire station in South Omaha next year, and we will ask the council to approve the land purchase agreement as soon as next month. We have built five new splash grounds in our city parks, and we've upgraded three community centers. We have increased support for important community programs, neighborhood development, development and job training. We remain the largest supporter of the Step Up Summer Jobs Program. In addition to our $1 million financial commitment, 19 Step Up interns are working in city departments this summer. Police, fire, planning, library, parks and rec, human resources, finance, human rights and relations, law, and the Convention and Visitors Bureau all have step up interns working in those departments this summer. We created the Way to Work program with our partner, the Salvation Army. This work readiness program provides employment, training, and services to citizens who are homeless and expands our commitment to workforce development and training. Since we started five months ago this program, 23 have been selected to participate and eight have successfully completed the program. We have done these things and much more while reducing our property tax rate. And we have shown that it can be done. We must continue this sound financial management in the future. The 2020 budget also includes an accounting change resulting from our agreement on the long-term lease and sale of the city-owned Omaha Hilton Hotel to Freestone Capital. Freestone will now pay us $4.4 million annually for the remaining bond payments on the hotel, and then we, in turn, pay the bondholders. This is a pass-through. It's not new spending at all, and the taxpayers have no additional financial obligations. This is, however, for the first time, listed in the general fund budget. Given our high priority on public safety, we have consistently increased the police department's budget to hire additional sworn officers. We have met our current staffing goal, increasing the number of police officers from 804 to, in, in 2013 to 902 this year. The number of officers will remain 902 in 2020. We have eliminated, however, nine civilian positions in the police department that were open and not filled, and they were no longer needed. This increases efficiencies and reduces unnecessary cost. We propose upgrading our vehicle fleet with additional S, uh, SUVs. The police department budget will increase 3.4% in 2020. In the fire department, the number of sworn firefighters will remain the same at 658. There will be three fewer civilian positions in the fire department, but like police, we no longer need these open positions. We are not making cuts to public safety. There are new and important expenses to address firefighter health and wellness and job performance. This includes additional protective equipment or turnout gear, upgrades to our heart monitors and vehicle replacements. The Capital Improvement Plan, or the CIP, provides funding to replace Station 31 in South Omaha and our ongoing program to replace and upgrade fire apparatus. The fire department budget will increase 2.6% in 2020. Street resurfacing is also a, a significant priority for my administration. We have increased the street resurfacing budget considerably every year, 
In 2020, it will grow to $12.6 million. But when it comes to the general condition of our roads, it is clear that we must do even more. Decades of neglect and underfunding have brought us to this point. The city has never had a long-term sustainable road maintenance and rehabilitation plan. We need one to improve the safety and the longevity of our streets and reduce annual maintenance costs. In the last week, we convened four community meetings throughout Omaha on this important challenge, to discuss this important challenge. At each meeting, we provided an overview of our infrastructure needs, repair and maintenance, major construction projects, and current and future funding options. I am pleased with the number of citizens that attended to learn, to ask questions, and to share their views. How we proceed must have the support of the taxpayers, and we will aggressively work towards recommendations in the coming months. Of course, most of the funds designed to expand and improve our roads come from our capital improvement program. The number of road and bridge reconstruction or rehabilitation projects in the CIP over the next three years is unprecedented. The sewer maintenance division will add eight full-time employees over the next year to maintain our Missouri River flood co control system and the nearly 2,000 miles of sewer system we have running through our city. In a cooperative effort with the Omaha Public Power District, the installation of LED bulbs in our streetlights has started and will continue for the next five years. We expect that our street lighting expense will fall about 5% every year for the next five years, and that will be reflected in the budget. We all try to look for small ways to save money, and this is one such example. We will also begin the public education and outreach program that will prepare our citizens for changes in the solid waste collection that will begin in 2021, January of 2021. And we, have success, and we have budgeted to expand the very successful spring neighborhood cleanup, and we added a fall cleanup. In our planning department, we will add one new housing inspector in 2020. At this time last year, we had six inspectors. We are now fully staffed at nine, and in 2020, we will grow to 10. Additional inspectors will also be budgeted in 2021 and 2022 when our proactive inspections required in our new rental registration and inspection ordinance begins. Technology improvements continue to be key in making our planning department more efficient and responsive. Online permitting improves review times, it increases accuracy and productivity, and it improves transparency. Just this morning, the new electronic plan review software upgrade went live. Some of the same online approaches will be used for the rental registration and inspection program. We have reduced the 2020 demolition budget as we catch up and we reduce the number of properties to be torn down. The budget is $800,000 for 2020 and that is enough to demo the estimated number of properties that will remain on the list in 2020. Right now, we are down to about 133 properties on our demo list. We have made significant progress to improve neighborhood safety by tearing down condemned property. And as you know, the city recently received a $25 million grant from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to help transform the North 30th Street corridor. Yesterday, HUD Secretary Ben Carson visited Omaha and toured the Highlander 75 North project and updated this exciting partnership in North Omaha. We are very excited about all of the work by public and nonprofit organizations that will continue to improve important neighborhoods in Omaha. Another example is the new Sienna Francis House under construction and is scheduled to open December 11th of this year. This facility will, pro pro will provide shelter and care for those in our city who are now homeless. Our philanthropic community is the largest funder of this project, and the city's contribution is $2.5 million in redevelopment bonds. Building great partnerships is the way we get things done in Omaha. Partnerships with our business, our development community, our philanthropic community, and our nonprofit sector. 
Nearly everything we accomplish benefits from the leadership, the financial support, and the vision of our valued partners. The Omaha Public Library uh, budget will increase 2%, which will help the library system continue to offer great services for our library patrons. And there is good news to report also on projected health care savings. Our costs for active employees and retirees will be reduced by more than $1 million next year. This improvement reflects greater efficiencies and more health care choice and ownership by plan participants. We are very close to achieving our goal of one city, one health care plan for active employees with the exception of the fire trust. The fire trust is the health care plan created and managed by the fire union, Local 385. Health care premiums for fire union members are 27% higher than premiums for other city employee plans. Next year, we will again fund a variety of community service programs with a total of about $2 million. For many, the city's support is just part of their overall budget. They can leverage our assistance to improve and expand their programs. Our annual general fund budget funds our departments, personnel costs, and programs. Our capital improvement program, or our CIP, outlongs long-term investments in transportation bonds or street bonds, public safety, public facility, parks, and environmental improvements. These projects really are investments that will last for decades and are funded primarily through voter-approved bonds and also federal funds. Our six-year CIP budget is nearly $1.8 billion over the next six years. The public has strongly supported our ballot proposals to issue these bonds. And we will continue to ask for bond issue support when it makes sense for our city and for the taxpayers who make that important financial commitment. Managing these CIP investments, the bonds and their expenses is one of the most critical responsibilities that we have at City Hall. To encourage citizen input and be completely transparent, the draft of the capital improvement plan and the recommended budget are available today on the City of Omaha website and I encourage citizens to review them. The public hearing on our proposed budget and CIP will be held in this chamber on Tuesday, August 13th at 6.30 p.m. in the evening. And I encourage you to attend and to provide your feedback. To every citizen in Omaha, let us continue to hear from you. You can hold us to the highest standards of accountability and public service. And thank you for the opportunity to serve you. Thank you. In case you didn't hear, uh, we'd ask and request the city clerk publish notice of the public hearing on the budget and CIP for August 13, 6.30 p.m. right here. Item 79 can be considered together for Falling Waters North, located south of HWS Cleveland Boulevard and west of 198th Street. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Item 7, an ordinance to rezone this property from AG District to R4 District, high density. Item 8, a resolution to approve the final plat for Falling Waters North. Item 9, a resolution to approve the Falling Waters North subdivision agreement. The public hearing on items 7 through 9 begin at this time. Are there any proponents?
questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Pauls? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Harding? Yes. Melton? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Items 7 through 9 are approved, 7 to 0. Thank you. Item 10, an application to consider a Class C liquor license for Firewater Grill located at 7007 Grover Street. The public hearing on item 10 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Hello, I'm Niraj Patel for Grover Street property. Address? 7007. Thank you. Grover Street, Omaha. Are you here to answer any questions? I think that you're here to answer oh, any yes. questions. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 10 is approved, 7 to 0. Thank you. Item 11, an application to consider a Class C liquor license for Happy Hour Spirits and Wine located at 13820 Manderson Circle. Public hearing on item 11 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Yep. Devin Amin, uh, 13820 Manderson Circle. And you're here to answer Happy Hour LMC. Yep. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Pauls, yes. Palermo, yes. Festerson, yes. Gray, yes. Harding, yes. Melton, yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 11 is approved, 7 to 0. Thank you. Item 12, an application to consider a Class IK liquor license for base camp located at 7309 Jones Street. The public hearing on item number 12 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Yes, good afternoon, Mr. President, members of the Council. Sean Kelly, 2804 South 87th Avenue. Appearing today on behalf of the applicant, happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Second, roll call. Pauls? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Harding? Yes. Melton? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Item 12 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 13, an application to consider a Class I liquor license for House of R, located at 911 South 87th Avenue, A's communication from the Planning Department for a permit for the outdoor area. The public hearing on item number 13 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Good afternoon. Vic Richards, President of House of R, here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. You understand that if there's a motion, it will be contingent upon permits. I'm sorry? You understand if there's a motion, there'll be it'll be contingent upon getting the proper permits. Yes, and I just wanted to mention um, on that uh, we will not be having that outdoor patio that is listed um, on the floor plan. Um, that's something that was a, a future plan for like next year. So um, you want to amend to remove the outdoor area? Yes. Okay, so that when we get after the public hearing, that'll be part of the motion. We'll do that. Okay. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. We need a motion to amend to remove the outdoor area. Second, roll call. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven zero. Roll call. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Melton? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Item 14, an application to consider a Class I liquor license for Richie's Bar located at 15244 West Maple Road. The public hearing on item 14 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Yes. Matt Bashara, SRB Inc., 15244 West Maple Road. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Pauls? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Harding? Yes. Melton? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Item 14 is approved, 7 to 0. 
Item 15, to consider a special designated liquor license application for Perry's Place, located at 9652 Mockingbird Drive, for an outdoor area on Saturday, August 3rd, 2019, from noon to midnight, with music until midnight. The public hearing on item 15 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Chad Perry, 9652 Mockingbird Drive, here to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Pauls? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Harding? Yes. Melton? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Item 15 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 16 is an SDL for Rhythms, and they have requested to withdraw this from the application. Is there a motion? Motion Roll call. Pauls? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Harding? Yes. Melton? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Motion passed, 7 to 0. Item 17, to consider a special designated liquor license application for Crescent Moon Ale House, located at 3578 Farnham Street, for an outdoor area on Friday, <coughs> September 27th, 2019, from 4 p.m. to 2 a.m., and Saturday, September 27th, 2019, from 11 a.m. to 2 a.m., with music until midnight each night. Now I have to ask, is this yeah. the Oktoberfest? It is, yes. <laughs> oh, everyone pay attention to this one. <laughs> Um, yes. Public Candace hearing Ladwin. begins at this time on, on item number 17. Are there any proponents? Um, Candace Ladwin, 4802 Capitol Avenue, and I'm here to answer any questions. And Blake Wedge, 5015 Charles Street, here to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Second. Roll call. Pauls? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Harding? Yes. Melton? Mr. President. Yes. And 17 is approved, 7 to 0. And we'll keep trying on Farnham Street. We'll get that. You got it. Yeah. We have it for this year. It closes at 6 o'clock on Friday. Congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Stuby, this is a momentous uh, <laughs> occasion. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Item 18, to consider a special designated liquor license application for Septemberfest Salute to Labor for Beer Garden at CHI Health Center, Lot D, located at 455 North 10th Street on Friday, August 30th, 2019, from 5 p.m. to midnight, and Saturday to Monday, August 31st to September 2nd, 2019, from noon to midnight, with music until midnight each night. The public hearing on item 18 begins at this time, and I would note that the uh, applicant who's usually here has uh, some health issues with her feet, so has asked that we waive the rule that, that she be present. Um, are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Second. Roll call. Pauls, Palermo, yes. Festerson, yes. Gray, yes. Harding, yes. Melton, yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 18 is approved, 7 to 0. Consent agenda. Any member of the City Council may cause any item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed from the consent agenda shall be taken up by the City Council immediately following the consent agenda and the order in which they were removed unless otherwise provided by the City Council rules of order. Motion approved. Second. Roll call. Pauls? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Harding? Yes. Melton? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Items 19 and 20 were approved 7 to 0. The public hearings on item, items 21 through 31 are today. If you wish to address the City Council regarding these items, please come to the microphone, indicate the agenda item number you wish to address, identify yourself by your name, address, who you represent, and if you are a proponent or opponent. Remove item 31. And we will be moving item 31. Going once. Going twice. Come on down. Get in line. Come on. Welcome. Don't be shy. This is item 31, right? Uh, no, we're going to do that one after the. Uh, oh, after 31 is after the rest. Yes. Okay. Yes. Elena Shriver, 2506 North 63rd Street. Um, Pada, moment win of High Peak Restaurant, item number 22. We're proponents, if anyone has any questions. Thank you. Are there anyone uh, else wishing to testify on, testify on items? 21 to 30. 21 to 30. 21 to 30. Mm -hmm. OK. Did, did
Do you wish to? I'm sorry, yes. Uh, okay. My name's Lisa Westra, and um, to, just to transfer the uh, liquor license into my name for Kinseth Hotel Corporation, I'm proponent. Thanks. Thanks for the extra effort you made to come okay. down here today. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. All right. Okay, and that's. No other proponents or opponents on these items? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. 21 to 30 is approved 7 to 0. Public hearing on item number 31 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Well, we have to have the public hearing and then we'll, we're going to we're going to be with there's probably going to be a motion to withdraw this item for today so but if you we've advertised a public hearing so if anyone wants to testify either as a proponent or opponent come on down you have that right mm -hmm. we're going to be withdrawing it though so let's see i have one one two i think i have enough Good afternoon, Doug Kagan, 416 South 130th Street, representing Nebraska Taxpayers for Freedom. As we know, the location and financing for an improved juvenile detention center has produced much controversy. One of the arguments we frequently hear is that this enormous expenditure, similar to the construction of this city county building, can be financed without a vote of the people. Indeed, current law does not require a vote of the people. However, there is no law that prohibits the vote of the people. Proponents on either side, those who prefer a renovation at 41st and Woolworth, and those who promote a downtown location can make strong arguments. Our taxpayer group supported a 2016 county bond issue that we believed would benefit both county and city because we trusted that the bonded indebtedness would save taxpayer dollars in future years through consolidation location of services. The opposition, though insignificant, had opportunity to address the issue prior to a citizen vote. Comparatively, promotion of what we consider a downtown extravagant juvenile center has unleashed a firestorm of opposition both from neighboring property owners and the general public. Therefore, we advocate for both city and county to forge ahead to fund an urgently needed justice center expansion, but separate out the juvenile detention facility for a ballot issue. Such decisions will allow an opportunity for both sides to inform the public and allow this city council to accept a decision by the will of the people. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other proponents or opponents on item number 31? <clears throat> Larry Storr, 5015 Lafayette Avenue, Omaha, Nebraska, 68132. Definitely an opponent. I agree with Mr. Keg. Uh, but I don't agree with withdrawing this. I think the intent of the Open Meetings Act implies that, yes, indeed, we do need a public vote on this. Now, it doesn't give me a lot of teeth as a citizen, but it does imply that if there is a violation of the law through these open meetings in any way, shape, or form, that all, every one of you can be held accountable for that. Yeah, the Supreme Court will tell me I don't have any standing, but I do because I'm a citizen and I pay property taxes. We already own that complex out on 43rd and Center or so. Uh, we don't need to build another one for them. Now, July 1st, there was a new law that says no child age 11 or under will be detained. Okay, so now we don't need extra beds, do we? Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other proponents or opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Item 32, an ordinance levying a special tax and assessment on certain lots, parts lots, and pieces of real estate in the city of Omaha to cover the cost of clearing snow and ice from sidewalks, group number 2018-03, A's amendment of the whole, requested by the Public Works Department. It's just a vote. Just the vote today. Is there a motion? Roll call. 
Paul. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Hardy. Yes. Melton. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. One public hearing will be held for items 33 to 39 for agreements for stabilized sewage sludge for an agreement period ending December 31st, 2019 with Keith Whitty, Grant Hansen, Kent McGinnis, Hagermeyer Farms, Inc., Kenneth Ahrens, Neil Farms, Inc., and Ryan Bundy. The public hearing on items number 33 through 39 are at this time. Are there any proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 40, an ordinance to approve a major amendment to a mixed-use district development agreement for Falling Waters located at 19431 Polk Street for the construction of a sign that does not meet standard setbacks on Lot 4, Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. The public hearing on item number 40 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Yes, Mike Ekman, 119 South 49th Avenue. I'm here representing the owner and applicant uh, here to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 41, an ordinance to designate the Tip Top Taylor's Building located at 1802, 1804, and 1806 North 24th Street as a landmark. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. The public hearing on item number 41 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Good afternoon, mem members of the Council. Joshua Biggs, Restoration Exchange Omaha, 3902 Davenport Street in Omaha. Here to answer any questions you may have. A LaFleur, uh, 4611 North 29th Street, uh, long tenant, and here to represent the uh, owner of the building at this time. Any Thank questions? You. Are there any other proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 42, an ordinance approving a second amendment to the redevelopment agreement with the Georgetown Zone 3 LLC to remove a parcel from the approved redevelopment plan area. The public hearing on item number 42 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Uh, yes, good afternoon. Don Seaton, Omaha City Planning. Uh, this one and the next agreement are kind of related to each other. Next one on your agenda. I'm uh, available for any questions you may have. Thank you. Todd Swarzik, Not All Companies, 2285 South 67th Street. Just here to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 43, an ordinance to approve the tax increment financing redevelopment agreement with the Nottle Homes 1 LLC to implement the 64 Ave Exarban Village tax increment financing redevelopment project plan located at 2210 South 64th Avenue in an amount up to $550,114. The public hearing on item number 43 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? That's again, Don Seaton, City Planning, and available for any questions you have. Are there any other proponents? Todd Swarzak, not all companies here to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any opponents? Larry Store, 5015 Off Ed Avenue, Omaha, Nebraska, 68132. I used to really like the scenery around the Sharbon area. I'd like to comment on this TIF again and make reference to a, an article on Bluebird News about millennials wanting to flock to the Northwest, where there's high-priced apartments, high-priced homes, and the end place to go. So as we continue building these things, like it's going to be up in Exarban now and all around the outside of Exarban and Dundee, bear in mind that these millennials that you're building them for to get them to come here will take flight, probably, for the Northwest Territories, particularly as they get a little bit older and that lifestyle doesn't fit their purposes anymore. So I am opposed to any further TIF funding for these things because it does affect my property tax and the people that live in those areas. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there any other opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 44, an ordinance amending the 2019 Dundee Business Improvement District work plan to provide for special assessments in the total amount of $15,700 for holiday decor and lighting, and for flower baskets. The public hearing on item number 44 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Molly Romero, 5101 Nicholas, uh, co-owner of Mark's Bistro, member of the board of the BID. 
also on the Dundee Merchants Association, Dundee Memorial Park Association Board. And I have some prepared comments, but I don't think I need to give them. But if I do, I'd be happy to give them. So I'll just stand ready for questions. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Becky App, co-owner of E-Creamery Ice Cream and Gelato and Dundee BID member. Thank you. Any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 45, an ordinance to accept the bid of Body Basics and the total amount of $12,300 to provide exercise equipment maintenance and repair service for community centers throughout the city. Public hearing on item 45 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 46, an ordinance to approve an agreement with Millard Public Schools to perform police work at the district property during the regular school year from August 14th, 2019 and ending at the close of the 2019-2020 school year. The public hearing on item 46 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 47, an ordinance to authorize payment to Skyworks Aviation for aviation fuel for the Omaha Police Department Air Support Unit helicopters, up to approximately 100000 a year for an estimated total of $1 million for a period of up to 10 years. The public hearing on item 47 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 48, an ordinance approving the contract with Medical Enterprises, Inc. for drug and alcohol testing of city employees and prospective employees for a period of three years. The public hearing on item 48 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Well, good afternoon. Tim Young, City HR Director, 1819 Farnham. I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 49, an ordinance to approve the acceptance of the Nebraska Crime Commission Fiscal Year 2018 Stop Violence Against Women grant in the amount of $241,932.62 during the project period of July 1, 2019 to June 30, 2020 to enhance victim assistance services and prosecute cases of domestic violence through the multi-agency Douglas County Community Response Team. The public hearing item 49 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 50, an ordinance to establish a new Class B flammable liquids storage district to be known as District Number B-203 at 4480 South 90th Street for YRC Freight. The public hearing on item 50 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 51, an ordinance to establish a new Class B flammable liquids storage district to be known as District Number B-204 at 4428 South 140th Street for Sunbelt Rentals, LLC. The public hearing item number 51 begins at this time. Are there any proponents or opponents that wish to be heard? Public hearing is closed. Item 52, an ordinance to transfer $475,036 in the City of Omaha 2019 budget from the wage adjustment account to the City Department. Public hearing on item number 52 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Non-action items. Item 67, this is the first reading for an ordinance awarding a contract to FCC Environmental for the Omaha Solid Waste Collections contract for the years 2021 to 2030 with an estimated annual cost of $22,691,046. I believe it is the wish of the council to postpone the second reading and public hearing to the August 13th, 2019 City Council meeting. Is there a motion to that effect? Yes, sir, a motion. Roll call. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Items 53 through 67 do not require public hearing or city council consideration at this meeting, but will be placed on a future agenda for public hearing and or vote. The reason for non-action is noted after the item on the agenda, as well as the date the item is expected to appear on the agenda for consideration. Is there a motion? Okay. Roll call. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Meeting is adjourned at 244.